Hey, okay, so this project was uh, actually used in my daughter's wedding as a cake stand. So I wanted something unique and I had found uh, two of these at a thrift store and they're really heavy and sturdy. They're kind of like a concrete type uh, material. Uh, and so I wanted to go ahead and prime it. I had started using Paint Couture's Sure Prep Primer, and I'm going to use their paint as well, which is an acrylic paint, and I just wanted to make sure that the paint was going to uh, stick really nicely. It's such a nice primer. There's no smell to it, and it actually dries super smooth, so you don't have to sand it or anything else. It's just ready for paint. So... Again, I'm using Paint Couture's uh, paint in the color Purely White. And I'm just going to give it one coat everywhere that I have primed. I did, however, use two coats of the primer. So, let's just start painting. Again, this is the color Purely White. And Paint Couture paint is a self-leveling paint. It's really smooth. And it's what I love to use if I am going to use a glaze. The glaze is also by Paint Couture and it is super easy to work with. So I'm gonna be using this staining pad so it's damp. I just put it under the faucet and then I just squeeze it out. And then that's what I'm gonna be using to wipe my glaze back from the top. Anyway, I'm also gonna be using these uh, pieces of cheesecloth for uh, the sides. So the color of glaze that I chose for this is called champagne and it's it's a really pretty, it's almost pearlescent, but it has a really pretty shimmer to it and it just looks really pretty over white. So all you do is just brush it on. So I'm using one of my new paint brushes by DIY, uh, Debbie's Design Diaries. Uh, and it's just a really, really soft brush. There's, there's five new ones, I think. But anyway, so you just paint it on. You don't have to be too particular in how you put it on because, like I said, you're going to be wiping it back. Like I said, this glaze is really easy to work with, but you still want to work in sections. So I'm going to start with the top, get that covered, and then we'll wipe that back. So I'm just going to take my damp pad here and I'm going to lightly wipe it back uh, going in one direction from one end to the next. Now I decided to put a little disposable glove on because it, it can get quite messy because with the sponge you are going to want to turn it around and uh, you know, find a clean spot. Now you can wipe off as much as you want. And if you decide that you have wiped off too much, you can always go back, add a little bit more, and uh, wipe that back. But don't overwork it. Once you get to a point where you like it, then then I would just stop and, and let it dry even though this is a really easy glaze to work with, you have a lot of time to work with it, it does start to dry and start to tack up. So don't try to come back, say, five, ten minutes later and try to wipe more back because, well, it's just not going to work well for you. So let's just go ahead now. I'm going to um, paint the sides really quick, and we'll wipe those back the same way. I actually meant to say glaze the sides. I am not painting. I am just brushing on glaze and wiping it off with the pad. So now we're getting to the decorative part. Um, and, this, and you do this a little differently because you want that glaze to sit down in all of those crevices. So I put it on pretty generously and we're going to wipe this part back using the cheesecloth, and you basically just kind of tap it off of the, the raised areas and leaving it down in the details. I'm sorry, I didn't have this set up with the best angle. 
I couldn't, um, I had to turn it so I could see what I was doing. So now I'm going to take these strips of uh, cheesecloth. I usually put those under one running water as well and squeeze those out, but I forgot to do that. So I'm just using my spritzer, my water spritzer here, and I'm just going to try to um, dampen them as I go. So again, I just wiped off, I started off tapping it and then I just wiped off um, the glaze from the raised areas. Another thing I like to do is take a, a kind of a blending brush and where some of the glaze has kind of pulled up together um, in, in those crevices that I couldn't really get to with the cheesecloth very well, I will just take this brush and kind of lightly kind of uh, just brush a little bit of it out. And again, it just kind of blends it all together. Okay, so I got the base all finished and then I decided I needed a little something extra, something to actually set the cake on. So I found this round wooden piece and I'm adding a trim all the way around the edges of it. it the width of it was the perfect size to go around uh, the outer edge here. So this is from the IOD Trimmings 3 mold and I'm just adding it right here all the way around, just kind of pressing it, pressing it on the top and bottom to make sure it fits nicely. So here it is, all right? So it's the uh, just a natural wood piece I found on Amazon, and I'm gonna paint it the same way that we painted the base. I did not prime it since it's just natural wood, but I did use two coats of the Paint Couture paint, and I just, uh, brushed it on. I was pretty liberal with the paint just because I like to um, make sure that I fill in any of the crevices or uh, the spaces that may have been left after the trim dried. So after I finished the first coat, I just let that dry. Again, I did do a second coat and I let that dry. So now we're just going to start with our glaze. We're going to put it on just like we did uh, the base top. If you remember, I'm using uh, the color Champagne. It is a glaze by Paint Couture, and it is just so pretty. So here's how the top of the base turned out, and we're going to just do the same thing on this top. Again, we're just going to brush it on. And there's no particular way you need to get it on there. Just uh, make sure to get it covered and remember to work in sections. So I'll do the top first and then I will do the edges. So again, I have my damp sponges or staining pads and I'm going to start from one end and go to the next and just kind of overlap a little bit each time that uh, I'm wiping it back. You do want to keep uh, rotating your uh, pad or your cloth around, but make sure this particular one I used had a, a trim on it, had an edge, and so it just kind of um, was not wiping back evenly. But I will show you that you can just paint, add more glaze if you know if you're taking too much off. So I just grab my brush again, and in those areas where uh, too much came off. I'm just going to add a little more glaze there and grab my um, pad and just repeat the process. Now normally I would uh, just rinse out my pad. It was getting kind of uh, soaked with the glaze. So I decided to grab uh, one of my new brushes. It's one of the really soft uh, DIY brushes. This one's actually called the Feather. I dampened it with uh, a little bit of water from my misting bottle just to give it a little more movement and blend it in. And I really love how this was turning out. I did add a little more glaze here and there and just continue to blend it in with the brush. So now all that's left is adding the glaze to the trim. 
So using a smaller artist brush, I just basically tapped the glaze on, just making sure that it got down into the details there and just took a little piece of damp cheesecloth and just basically blotted it off um, the high points. So I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Now all it needs is the cake. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful.